Welcome to the Complete Guide to Mid Journey series. In this video, we're going to be covering advanced prompts. We will discover how to use images to supercharge your prompts and how to use the blend method to combine images to help produce some incredible images. We also have some pro tips on how to save tons of time with permutations and so much more. Using these advanced prompts, it will help take your mid journey game to the next level. Make sure to check out the other videos in this series as they will cover different areas of mid journey. Just a quick note here. I will mainly be using the version 5.2 mid journey model in this video. There may be newer versions out as you are watching this, so feel free to use them. But if you would like to get the same results I'm getting in this video, I would advise you to use the 5.2 model. The same rules should mostly apply to all models. Okay, back to the video. So to get started, let's have a look at image prompts. With image prompts, it allows you to use images as part of the prompt to influence a job's composition, style, and colors. Image prompts can be used alone or with text prompts. So let's have a look at it. All right, so I've actually made an image here, and this is of a majestic owl with a white background. Now you can make any image you want, I just went with this random one to start with. So I've upscaled this image and I'm going to save it to my computer. And once you've saved it, to add it into the prompt box, come down to this plus icon and select upload a file. As you can see, it's added the image, then just press enter to finish uploading the image. So now I'll start a new prompt, so I'll put in slash imagine, and I'll drag that image that we just uploaded into the prompt box. As you can see, it's added the URL of the image. And then just put a space after the URL and write in what you want the prompt to be. So I'll try birthday cake. Now what should happen is Midjourney should see the image of the owl and see the text prompt of birthday cake and put them together. So let's see what kind of interesting images it makes. And these images are really interesting. So as you can see, it's merged the owl and a birthday cake into some kind of hybrid owl cake, which is really cool. It's actually managed to keep the facial structure of the owl that I gave it, while adding all sorts of cake-like candles, icing to the owl. It's pretty cool. Now let's have a look at the image weight parameter. So to start off with, Midjourney will see the image and the text prompt as equal, and it will merge them together. But with image weights, you can give preference to either. So if you want more emphasis on the image of the owl, you can make the image weight value higher for the owl, and the resulting image should look more like the owl. But if you give the image weight more to the cake, then the image should more resemble a cake. So I'm going to start off with birthday cake and give it an image weight of 0.5. Now the values of image weight go from 0 to 2 in mid-journey. As I've set image weight to 0.5, it means that the image has half as much importance as the prompt of birthday cake, so the image should be more resembling a birthday cake than an owl. And yes, the results came out as expected. The image is more looking like a birthday cake than an owl. But the owl is still in there, but just not as much as before when they were equal. Now I'm going to try it with different image weight values. So I'll try 1.25, which should give more preference to the image of the owl over the cake. And as you can see, it did work. The owl is more prominent in this image, but there are still hints of birthday cake. You can see some swells of icing, some things resembling candles, but it's more of an owl. And here it is with image weight 1.5, and it's nearly resembling the initial image of the owl. It's just added a few weird little creative flourishes to the owl. And here's with image weight too. And it just looks like the initial image we had of the owl, with a few additions of some kind of birthday cake related items. So let's try image weight with a different prompt. So here's an image I generated of a happy dog in a field. I uploaded this image into mid journey and added the prompt party balloons after. So it should merge a dog with party balloons. And these are the results. Now, they look really good, but the top right one is quite frightening. As you can see, it's merged a girl with... She looks kind of like a pig slash dog, but yeah, that's just really weird. But it's done a really good job in the other images of merging that dog image with party balloons. 
Using images in your prompt can be really helpful, as if you've got an image with a composition that you like, and you put that image into Midjourney, it will look at that composition and try to keep it as close as possible without changing it too much. So let's try different image weights. This is an image weight of 0.5, so there should be more emphasis on the balloons. Which, yes, as it shows, the balloons are more prominent in these images. And here's image weight 2, which should resemble the dog more, and it does. The dog is there and balloons are hardly in the image. The top left one has a few tiny balloons floating around. So that's a quick look into image weights. Now let's have a look at blending images. So using the blend command allows you to upload 2 to 5 images, and then it looks at all the concepts and aesthetics of each image, and merges them into a new image. So I've typed in slash blend, and then press the spacebar, and it should open up with some boxes. It gives you the option for dropping in two images, and if you click this plus four more here, you can see the options of adding either three, four, or five images. And you can actually change the dimensions. So what I'm going to do is drop a couple of saved images I have. So I'm going to drop in the owl image and the dog image. Just press enter, and then we'll see how Midjourney merges these images. And it created some really interesting images. So check these out. It's a hybrid of the owl and dog images we gave it. It seamlessly blended the owl features into the dog. I would say it more resembles a dog, but you can still see some of the owl feathers coming through it. That's really impressive. So now I'm going to try blending three images. So I'll add back the owl and the dog. I'll also add this colourful texture, just to see what it does. And again, these look really impressive. It's sticking more to the dog than the owl, but you can still see some of the feathers coming through. And it's added this really cool colourful pattern to the background. You can also add images that aren't made in Midjourney. Here is another image of an owl I made, combined with a piece of art I got off the internet. And let's see what it does when it combines them and it's created some incredible images. It's managed to merge the two images really well, to blend both images to create a truly unique image. You can try mixing two different art styles and see what kind of results you get. Now let's have a look at multi-prompts. So using multi-prompts you can blend multiple concepts using the double colon as a separator. Using a multi-prompt allows you to assign relative importance to the concept in the prompt, helping you control how they are blended together. So to explain this, I'll start off with a basic prompt. I'll use cupcake, and Midjourney should create an image of a cupcake. And as expected, we get four images of a really good looking cupcake. But now using the multi-prompt feature, if we add double colon in between the words cup and cake, it should create a different image. Make sure to put in the word cup, and straight after cup, with no spaces, put double colon, and then a space, and then your next word. And what this should do is it should separate those two words into cup, separately, and cake. So we should have an image with those two separate things in it. And we get some really interesting results. So as you can see, from the old prompt we got an actual cupcake, but this one has taken those two words separately and merged them together. We have an image which resembles more of a cup, plus a cake in it. So these ones have mugs or cups, it's more like a cake has been placed on top of it. So this can just help to separate your prompts a bit more. And what we can do from here, we can add prompt weights. So with prompt weights, you can give more emphasis to one of the words. So I've put in cup, colon colon, space, cake, colon colon, and put two after the double colon. Now what this does is it's telling Midjourney that cake is twice as important as cup, so we should get an image with more cake in it. It works very similar to the image weight parameter. And as you can see here, the image resembles more of a cake than a cup. And now I'll try cup with a prompt weight of two instead. And it came out as expected. The cup is more prominent in this image. So let's have a quick look at another prompt. So for this prompt I used water bottle, and these are the results I got. For some reason Midjourney has put some artwork on these water bottles, but they do look like water bottles I guess. Now I'll give water a prompt value of 2, and water nothing. So we should get more of a watery image. And yes we did, there is still a bottle in there, but water is the main focus. 
And here is Bottle with a prompt weight of 2. And the bottle is more prominent, but with water still in the image. So this is incredibly useful if you want parts of your prompt to have more emphasis than others. Now let's have a look at permutation prompts. What permutation prompts do, they allow you to quickly generate variations of a prompt with a single slash imagine command. So if you want to create loads of different images but don't want to type out loads of individual prompts, then this is extremely useful. Now, depending on what subscription model you have, you will be able to do different amounts of permutations. With the basic subscribers plan, you can do a maximum of four jobs with a single permutation prompt. With standard subscribers, you can do a maximum of 10 jobs. With pro and mega subscribers, you can create a maximum of 40 jobs with a single permutation prompt. So let's say I want an image of a flower, but I want it in different colors. I don't want to waste time writing individual prompts with all the different colors. I just want to write one prompt that will generate all these different images. You have to put your permutations inside curly braces or curly brackets, depending on what you call them. So here I've got a beautiful curly bracket, red, comma, space, blue, comma, space, yellow, curly bracket, space, flower. So what this tells Midjourney is that it needs to create a red, blue, and yellow version of that flower, and it will do this all in one go. When you press enter, you will see this notification pop up. Are you sure you want to imagine three prompts from the template? You can click show prompts. It will show you all the different prompts that it will start. And I'll just click yes. And as you can see, the jobs start automatically. This is a huge time saver. And there you go, it's created three amazing batches of images. They all look really good. And you can use permutations for anything, really. So here I'll try different aspect ratios. So I'll write in a beautiful blue flower, and then space, hyphen hyphen, AR, space, curly braces, and then I'll include all the aspect ratios I want to create. So I've got 3 by 2, 1 by 1, 2 by 3, and 1 by 2, and then curly braces, and press enter. It will always give you this notification to confirm. And it's created the same prompt, but in different aspect ratios. So I can decide which one I like best. You can also use permutations to generate images using different versions of Midjourney. They look so different. And you can use multiple permutations in the same prompt as well. So here I've got a beautiful curly braces, green, comma, space, purple, curly braces, flower in the jungle, and then another permutation in the same prompt with curly braces, jungle, comma, space, desert, curly braces. So this should generate four images. And here you go. I've got a green flower in the jungle and desert, and it's also given me a purple flower in the jungle and desert. And here's another permutation example. And for this image, I want a bird that is a red one, a pastel one, and a yellow one. And it's generated some great images that match those colors. But say I wanted a red bird and then a yellow and pastel bird together, not separately. All you have to do is put a backslash before that comma, and then it should see pastel and yellow as one. And it will say two jobs instead of three now. It will generate a red bird and then a pastel yellow bird. And as you can see, we've got our red bird and then a yellow bird with pastel-like colors as well. All right, now let's have a look at Remix. Remix mode is extremely useful, as if you find an image that you like but want to change an aspect of it, it can do just that. So let's try an example prompt. I've created a prompt with a bowl of fruit, and I've got these images. And just make sure in your settings you've got Remix mode on. I'll upscale an image that I like. Now you'll see very strong and very subtle. Very strong will give you a wider range of changes, whereas very subtle will have less changes. I like to use very strong. And now this box will pop up, which allows you to remix the prompt. So I'll try a bowl of cartoon fruit, and let's see what it makes. So as you can see, we've got a cartoon bowl of fruit now, and it's kept the same kind of composition as the original image. Now I'm going to try remix, but with a different prompt. I've generated an image of a watch, but I don't quite like the band on it, so I'm going to use Remix mode to change that. So I've clicked on Very Strong, 
and I'm going to change the prompt to a blue watch with a metal band. I've used raw style for this image as I wanted it to look more realistic. And I've also used the no parameter, which should get rid of any leather in the image. If you're wondering what the no parameter is, well, I've created a video all on parameters in Midjourney, which you can find in the link below. And we got some really good results. As you can see, it's generated a watch, it's added the metal band that I asked it to, and it's got rid of any leather. So I hope you can see how powerful the remix mode is. It allows you to tweak an image to your liking. All right, we've come to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and there are more videos in the complete guide to Midjourney series. Just find them in the description below. If you've learned anything in this video, give us a thumbs up, feel free to subscribe, and click the thumbnail on the screen to check out another incredible video in our Ultimate Midjourney Guide series. You won't want to miss it.